Man fit! Man fit! Man fit! The man who would be king, despite his centre-right political grouping down to lose around 40 seats in the European Parliament, Manfred Weber is laying his claim on Europe's top job. His European People's Party did win the most seats in these elections. Having this result in mind, I think we have the legitimacy to, to ask for leadership. That is what my party will do. But his road to take over from Jean-Claude Juncker is littered with obstacles. And not least from Hungary, where he had said he did not want to become president with their support. The votes of Fidesz are coming from the Hungarian people. We got 52% uh, of public support back at home. So uh, that shows that uh, Manfred Weber looks at uh, Hungarian people as second league citizens, which is unacceptable, which we totally uh, reject. Uh, Hungarian people are not less valuable than any other citizens of any other uh, EU member states. So based on that position of him, of course, we cannot um, uh, support him. Ultimately, it will be EU leaders who decide who takes the European Commission presidency. And with the Liberals having gained in the elections, they're being seen as the king or queen makers. French President Emmanuel Macron and his allies around Europe are feeling empowered. I appreciate Mr. Weber. I met Mr. Weber in Luxembourg, I met him in Strasbourg, and he's a very nice person, and I'm sure he would do also a good job. But it's not only who's doing the job, it's also what is going to be the job. The Liberal candidate most likely to get their favour is EU Competition Commissioner and former Danish Economy Minister Margareta Vesteyer. Still in the running for the lead candidates of the Socialist political group is Franz Timmermans. And there's still talk that the EU's French chief Brexit negotiator, Michel Barnier, while being centre-right, may win favour from the Liberal French President Macron and also, crucially, in Berlin. The thing about um, European politics is that you have results, who won the elections and, you know, size of parties, but you also have gender, uh, balances between north, south, east, west, competence. Usually, presidents of the Commission have been former prime ministers. And the leaders starting their summit in Brussels Tuesday are in no way tied to the system of selecting the EU Commission president from the leaders of the political groups. There could still be some surprises in store yet. And Jack is in Brussels this morning. Let's head straight over to him for the very latest. Morning to you, Jack. Uh, a contentious battle, as we heard there in, uh, in your report. Is there any breakthrough expected at this summit this evening? I wouldn't say so, Belle, to be honest. You never know when it comes to these issues. We don't know what discussions the leaders have been having behind closed doors. But I think if this were a boxing match, tonight this summit is the weigh-in. Everyone's going to be taking a look at who their candidates, their favoured candidates are and what's going on. You have to remember as well that nationally some parties, uh, some leaders are going to be feeling very empowered. Uh, the Italians at the moment, the league doing very well, uh, the, the ruling league party in Italy doing very well in the European elections. Interestingly as well, that party of Manfred Weber, the CSU, in, the CDU in Germany, had the worst um, showing that they've ever had, actually, in EU elections. So there's a lot to go on. We also have to remember that the Brits won't have the say that they've had in the past. Theresa May is coming here knowing that she's leaving her position. Austrian Chancellor Sebastian Kurz has just faced a, a no-confidence vote and lost it, meaning that this summit, there's really all to play for. German Chancellor Angela Merkel, this is her last opportunity to choose the next Commission President. And French President Emmanuel Macron, he's going to want to put his stamp on it. There is going to be a lot of difficult negotiations going on here at the summit today, Belle. Mm, and of course, the way that the Commission President is uh, chosen within the European Parliament, certainly, each grouping has its own favourite uh, candidate. But this year, what's a little bit different is uh, that there's no party, no grouping that has an overall majority. So how uh, is that candidate going to be chosen? Well, this is exactly it. I think what we might see today, Belle, and what, what I think a lot of people are looking out for is whether anyone's going to be ruled out from this. And Manfred Weber, that leader of the EPP party, the centre-right party, that lost 40-odd seats in the elections but still have the most seats in the European Parliament, he's pushing this claim. But as we heard, a lot of the former, uh, uh, a lot of the EU Commission presidents have been former prime ministers, and he has never held high office in Germany. So there's a lot of pressure for for him to perhaps be moved aside. And the French president Emmanuel Macron has said that he simply will not accept Manfred Weber. 
What we might see is other names thrown into the hat at this summit, new candidates, new people. The leaders may not follow this Spitzing candidate system, this system where the Commission president has to be taken from the lead political party that won the most seats. That's what we'll be watching out for today at the summit, Bell.